I've set up this quiz to check how well users know the difference between crocodiles and their relatives, alligators and caimans, because, well, most people don't know the difference. Now, I could send this off to a server to check the answer, and that would be more secure, but for a fun little quiz like this, I think it's way easier to process it with JavaScript and jQuery. So what do we have? We have a form tag here, and inside that we've got a label and an image of the reptile. Then we've got a select tag, which is the drop down that the user will pick from, and then a button that they'll use to check their answer. Below that, of course, we've got the jQuery script tag, the script tag where we'll put RJS, and then some pseudocode that describes what we want to accomplish. So when the user submits a form, we're gonna check what answer they picked and tell them if they're right or not. So let's get started turning this pseudocode into reality code. The first thing we want is an event listener for when the user submits the form. We actually have a few options here. We could listen to the click event on this button using that click event that we've already used so many times. However, since we have a proper form tag, it'd be better if we listen to the submit event on the form. That way, if the user tried to submit the form some other way, like by pressing enter on the dropdown, we'd still find out about it. So I'll write jQuery to find the form, it's just quiz form, then use the on method to listen to submit and pass it a callback function. Okay, so now we're listening to the submit event and we're not doing anything. Normally, when a user submits a form on a website, the browser then sends that form off to a server and reloads the entire page. Since we're using JavaScript to intercept the form submission and handle it ourselves, we need to tell the browser not to do that default behavior of reloading the page. So to prevent that, we need to name the event object that jQuery passes to us and then call event.preventDefault. There, so that will make sure that the browser doesn't do its normal thing with form submits and you know, reload the page. It'll just keep the user on the page and we can do whatever we want in our JavaScript. Very good. All right, so now, now we need to actually do this part, check the answer. So the first thing we wanna do is check which answer the user selected in the dropdown. Let's start with a variable that stores the dropdown. And then we need to find that dropdown. So let's see, it's got an ID, so I'll just, I'll just use that ID. So quiz-answer. Okay, so now what is this variable storing? It's, it's storing the, the jQuery collection that has the select element inside of it. And what we actually are interested in is the string value that represents what option they've selected. So what we actually want is a variable that has crocodile, alligator, or caiman. So to get that value, we can get that, uh, I'll make another variable. So we can get that by calling val, this is a jQuery method. So we're calling the jQuery method val on the answer object. And what that tells jQuery to do is to look inside the collection, find the element that, you know, that find that first element and look at the value of that element. And jQuery knows that for a select, the value should be the value attribute of the selected option. And so it should return back a single string, which is either crocodile, alligator, or caiman. And it's always a good thing to make sure that this actually works as we think. So you can go ahead, uh, I'll stick a console.log in, and then I can actually try it out and check on console, like a responsible developer, make sure that it's the string I expect and then I can be happy and move on. If you want, pause now, try that yourself. Okay, so now let's display some text to the user 
to let them know if they got it. And let's see. So you might have figured this out already, but this image is most definitely a crocodile. You can tell by the visible lower teeth and the V-shaped snout. It is such a crocodile. So we'll use an if statement to check if the answer variable equals crocodile. And if so, we'll output some congratulatory text in the result div. Say, wow, you got it, woo, party. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> and if they didn't get it right, we'll just use an else and we'll write a little message, tell them to try again, always try again in life. Great. So our pseudocode is now reality code, and you should try the quiz yourself to make sure it works. And don't just try the right answer, also try the wrong answer, even though you and I both know that it's a crocodile. Whenever you're developing web pages and apps, you must put yourself in the shoes of all your users to make sure that your experience works for everybody.